Okay, welcome to Belto Tech video on updating Quanchang's UVK5 firmware. Um, this is the firmware website where I download all the firmware. Uh, I'm, I'll be showing you how to update to version 3. There is already a very stable version 2.95 R3, but we'll skip that and go to version 3. It's uh, R5. It's pretty stable. I've been using it for some time now, and I'll be sharing this link in the uh, YouTube uh, video description, uh, down in the description. And um, this is the firmware. You download the firmware with this. This also comes with uh, Chirp Module 48. I'll tell you what is Chirp Module 48 and how to use that. And this is the website we'll use to flash the firmware. Yes, it's a JavaScript based flasher. You don't have to install anything uh, on your laptop. You can just go to the website. I'll put it link in the description below and select a firmware in fact there are options for it to pick up this firmware straight from a website and flash it for you uh, that's for another day but here uh, this is an excellent there are hundreds of firmwares you can explore on your own but i'm sticking with ijv it's very uh, very well done very stable and it's worked for me so i'm not playing much around and there are you know uh, documentation here on how to upgrade it, uh, upgrade the firmware using your laptop, using K5 Proc Win, uh, you know, software. But I'm not getting into that. I'm trying to make this as easy for most people as possible, right? So I've already downloaded uh, the version 3. Version X3 is if you have made an EEPROM hardware mod, which can take, change the EEPROM, uh, you know, chip on that, which can go from 200 channels to 999 channels. I've not done that. I'm looking forward to doing the HF mod, but that's sometime in the near future, not today. So don't look at X3 if you have not done that mod. V3 is good enough. So I've already downloaded this. Last update is 27 June. This is the latest 3.21. So I'll be updating this. I have that already here installed. This is the firmware module. This for uh, X3, VX3, this for V3. We'll be using this in Chirp. I'll be showing you how to do that. But let's uh, go ahead and plug in the cable and then we'll come and update the firmware right thank you for uh, staying with me continue to stay around i'll show you how to update the firmware i'll just connect the cable and come back okay so i've connected the cable and if you open up your device manager easy way to open up your device manager is press uh, you know uh, win key x and go to device manager so it'll ask for admin privileges and you give that and you should see this entry here which is ports command lpt you should see USB CH340, that's a popular chipset. And right now, the Bofeng cable is connected on COM8, COM port 8. So that is what we'll use. So let us uh, let me see how uh, you can connect the cable um, into the radio and put it on firmware update mode. OK, so let's see here. You open up this, uh, put it to this one. You open up this, right? You connect the cable. The cable is already connected. The drivers are loaded. If the drivers are not loaded correctly, you might have to use a software called Zedic, but uh, but usually it'll just work fine. Uh, so once you connect it like this, you need to try this a couple of times because the cable is really, really hard to get it uh, completely in. Um, wish Quanchung could come up with their own cable rather than using Bofun, uh, make it a uh, little more hardware-wise compatible. So what you need to do is put this radio on firmware mode. You need to press PTT and turn on this. If it doesn't turn on, leave it, put it, pull it out, turn it off, hold this in, hold the PTT and turn it on. You should see uh, a single solid light on, white light, which is the torch, but the display is off. That's normal. Now you put the cable in. Sometimes it will work, sometimes and press it tightly i mean really really tightly just don't press the ptt on that side hold your fingers here and press the sound tightly because it should sit very well now open up uh, the website that i showed you click on browse uh, we'll just use the software uh, that we had selected earlier not this one this the stock firmware let me go to my desktop where's my desktop in the desktop i had put up here right so firmware, I'll be using N321 bin. That is what you need to use, N321 bin, right? And it gives you detected CRC check pass, so that's a good thing. Detected firmware version, right? And uh, let me kind of do this. Uh, firmware uses 97.72% of available mem memory, right? And you click on flash firmware, right? 
it will show you what serial port to be used. This is the serial port comment that we all already saw on the device manager. You click on connect and it should start flashing right away. Assuming you have pressed this very, very hard, this should work. Otherwise, it will say read error, could not detect any data from the phone. That means you have not pushed this all the way through, right? So this is the firmware getting flashed and uh, successfully flashed firmware and there you go. It reset. Now you take out the cable, right? You, you okay okay switch it off you need to as per the uh, instructions in the website you need to reset the phone as well to do that press the first button press the ptt and then turn on uh, the radio let me turn on the radio so you should see this and then go to the uh, memory uh, sorry menu you should see 71 you see that 71 uh, otherwise if you just turn it on and go to the menu you'll see about 56 so extra settings get like TX disable and all that thing comes in the service menu. That's how you get to that place. F lock complete. Uh, so uh, go through the uh, documentation of that firmware. They have given uh, extensively good documentation on what each of these options mean. So here we are reset. Press on that. Uh, we don't want to reset just the VFO. We want to reset the entire uh, setting just to be sure that there is none of the remnants. See. Firmware part is different, the data part is different. Even when you uh, push data via chirp, uh, it'll uh, send both firmware, uh, the program code settings and the uh, content data part like your memory and all those things, right? So uh, what you need to do here is that press sure and uh, yes, I'm sure, wait. So it's resetting that entire uh, not a phone, uh, the constant radio and it restarts, right? So it comes here, right? So congratulations, you can go look at that uh, menu option, info, uh, you should see what firmware has been loaded. See, uh, we have got IJV mod version 3.21, 7.7 volts is the battery. And this is the best part of that, uh, S meter or you can select RSSI meter, which allow um, for the DB measure, right? So I'll put it at S meter and then exit from this and uh, click on TX, it'll TX on that. So you can even uh, program all this. So this is the monitor mode. See, it's showing DD and uh, signal, signal as well, right? Uh, you can go to the FM mode. Okay, I, I think this is the, uh, that one takes the mode of that, and hold mode. Just, uh, I don't know. I'll have to see how to go to the FM radio part. Yeah, but uh, this is how the firmware update is done. And uh, next option is, let's see if I can record uh, the updating, uh, the co what people now call as code plug, just settings uh, from Chirp. Uh, let me set up Chirp and come back. Thank you.